Sure is, Gary. You know, I can understand why he had his heart so set in coming here. There's, there's something about the music and the respect played the flag kind of gets under your skin, doesn't it? Sure does. Every phase of cadet life is designed to be inspirational. We concentrate on teaching them the meaning of honor, patriotism, and self-respect. Yes, sir, I can, I can believe that. Oh, by the way, Major, how, how's the kid doing? Oh, excellent, Mr. Farrell. I'm sure you'll be proud of his progress. You can say that again. That boy sure got what it takes. <laughs> you ought to hear him talk, you'd think he was the dad. <laughs> well, by the time you don't want the job, I'll take it over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, emotional expenses. A little bill? Yes, for uniforms, books, and so forth. Uh, you'll find it all itemized. Well, I'll take care of this right away. I'll mail you a check. That's all right. I want to thank you, Major, for letting us watch the wheels go around. Not at all. Parents of our cadets are always welcome. Well, good day, sir. Good day. Good day. Good day. I told you to take fancy dough to keep making this joint. He's only been here a little while and already you got Bill. It's a high class place. It costs dough to keep a kid in here. Ah, Find that out. Hello, son. How are you, huh? Hiya, General. Hey, Biff. Gee, Dad, I'm glad to see you and Biff. If you'd been here a little sooner, you could have watched this march in review. We saw you through the window. Yeah, and did you look proud and handsome? How do you like it so far, Mick? Gee, Dad, it's super. This is the real thing. Not just pretending like when I was home. You sure used to put Biff and me through a stiff course of military training. Yeah, if you can take this military stuff like you poured on, you'll be all right. I can take it, but I'm worried about you, Biff. I'm afraid you'll get sloppy when I'm not there to keep you on your toes. <laughs> oh, General, you know I wouldn't be like that. <laughs> Don't you worry, Mick. I'll keep him on his toes. That's an order from your superior officer. Yes, sir. Dad, you and Biff come on up and see my room. I'll get permission from the commandant. Well, we haven't got time right now, Mick. You see, we're on a run that took us nearby. We just dropped in to say hello. <laughs> gee, I'm glad that you're so happy about it all. I bet you're giving those other guys a mark to shoot at. Well, we'll be seeing you. Come again as soon as you can. We'll do that. Keep your chin up, General. Right. Gee, looks well in his uniform, don't he? Yeah. My boy. No, 
Well, for a guy who works for a living, you sure get some swell ideas. I tell you, Gary, you can't do it. Can't do what? Keep Mickey in that school. It costs more than you make, and the dough you saved up ain't gonna last long at this rate. Yeah, I know. If that garage deal hadn't fallen through, everything would have been all right. Biff, I gotta keep Mickey in that school. He's gonna get some of the breaks in life I never got. Working after school, jerking sodas, paper routes. It's the way Mary and I planned it before she died. I'm not gonna let her down. I know how you feel, Gary. But what are you gonna use for money? I don't know. I'll work it out somehow. Say, Biff, I got an idea. It better be honest. It is. The industrial boxing tournament the company's pulling. There's a $500 prize in the heavyweight class. Hey, are you kidding? Those mugs will murder you. I don't know about that. I've always been able to hold up my end in a fight. Oh, I know you have, Gary, but you'll be going up against guys who can box. That's different from an ordinary brawl. So what? A fight's a fight. If I can get away with that prize, it'll pay enough in advance to, to give me a chance to get the rest of it together. What can I lose? Well, nothing much. Maybe an eye or two. Say, Biff, I'm pretty friendly with Pop Turner, who runs the company gym. He knows a professional game backwards. Maybe he can wise me up in a point or two. Well, it's the first time I ever heard of a guy asking for expert advice on how to get murdered. <laughs> you know, Gary, you're gonna run up against some pretty tough competition in that tournament. I expect that, Pop. The company wouldn't be putting up a $500 prize just to be giving away the dough. Uh, it's no use you can't talk him out of it. He won't be happy till he wakes up in the hospital. <laughs> All right, suppose you have a little workout with one of the boys and we'll see what you got. Gee, thanks, Pop. Come in. Come here. Yeah, Pop. Meet Gary Farrell. How are you? Hi, Callahan. I want you to go a couple of rounds with him. Yeah, it'll be a pleasure. Gary, go in the locker room. Get yourself a pair of trunks and a headgear. Thanks, Pop. Remember, Sparky, this is only a workout. Ha-ha, <laughs> don't worry. I won't hurt your little protege. You know, Pop Gary's a swell guy, but he's taking a chance on getting his head knocked off because he needs a dough to keep his kid in military school. What are you going to do with a guy like that? Help him win that dough if we can. I'm afraid he hasn't got it, Biff. Enough, Gary? No, Pop. Not yet. Sorry if I heard him, Pop. Well, if you did, he don't know anything about it. He's out cold. Hey, looks like he'll be out all night without going anyplace. Yeah, go get dressed and come into my office and we'll talk about that tournament. And say, when he comes to, explain to him what happened, will you? Okay, Pop. Go on, wake up. Hey. And so, Gary, if you learn how to defend yourself, you might have a chance to cop the heavyweight title in that tournament. Couldn't you teach me how, Pop? Well, in my time, I taught quite a few who became top-notchers. I know you have. That's why I'd like you to handle me, will you? On one condition, Gary. What's that? You'll do what I tell you to. Anything you say goes. It's a deal, boy. <laughs> okay, Pop, thanks. I'll be seeing you. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. You should be knocking me down like that. Well, nobody knocked you down. You fell. Well, what else could I do? You so rudely jerked the door out of my hand. Well, I said I was sorry, didn't I? 
outside. You shouldn't be peeking in keyholes. Well, of all the nerve! <laughs> what a right. Hope she doesn't enter the tournament. <laughs> hey, who's he think he is? It's Gary Farrell, one of our truck drivers. Oh. Well, he's nice. Well, what brings you here? Anytime Pop Turner comes out of retirement, there's a story in it. You know my sports editor. No story this time, Linda. I'm not in the fight game anymore. Oh, no? Pop Turner, who trained three world champions, is now athletic instructor for the Braddock Trucking Company. Why? You know the right answer, so give. Well, I uh, had to go to work. Some of my investments blew up in my face. And nothing could get you back in the fighting racket. Not even if it's the tournament I covered a boy with a punch like Dempsey's? Hey, you're not a reporter. You're a mind reader. <laughs> yourself up to the finals. Be like a winner? Hey, Pop. I can't lose. You'll break the heart of one fan if you do. I saw Mickey out at the ringside with Biff. Yeah. Couldn't keep him away. Sure would, Mickey. But look, now don't you feel bad if you see him slapped around a bit at first because he always takes a few while he's sizing up the other guy before he lays him on ice. I won't be worried. My dad's got everything. He can take it. Well, he's got a son that ain't exactly a softy. Chip Morgan. Oh, hello, Linda. How are you? What are you doing away out here? I thought you'd die if you didn't breathe the monoxide of Broadway. No, just looking the boys over. You know, never can tell where you find a gold mine. So I've heard, although I've never done any prospecting myself. Oh, pardon me. I'd like you to know Miss Langdon. Uh, Rita, this is Miss Mark. Charmed, I'm sure. Are you really? Linda's one of our best newspaper women. How thrilling. Mm, it has its moments, like bricklaying and gold digging. Trucking Company at 195 pounds, Stoker Cooley. At 196 pounds, the pride of the Braddock Trucking Company, Gary Farrell. Stay in your cell till you see his chance to punch. Hey, that pride of the trucking company looks interesting. I think mean, he's dynamite. It might be fun to touch a match to him and watch the explosion. Smart little girls don't play with matches.
died before getting murdered. Uh, Rita, would you mind going home alone tonight? I'm going to try to see him after the fight. Oh. You hurt, Gary? Oh, Pop, I'm all right. Well, lie to me, kid. I wouldn't. Okay. I'm a champ, I guess. But you could let Joe loose if you got, ever got the chance, I bet you. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's a mighty big order, I bet you. Uh, thanks, Biff. Don't forget, boy, you got some prize money waiting at the box office Forget for it, you. Pop. That's the most important money I ever made. Oh, so it's you again. Yeah, no wisecracks. <laughs> I'm sorry, miss. Did you hurt yourself? Just my feelings. Hey, you have a habit of flooring people. <laughs> I was a little lucky tonight. Pop, come here, will you? Huh? So I've knocked this young lady down twice now. Don't think I rate an introduction? How about it, Linda? Go ahead. I might as well know the guy if he's going to keep knocking me down. At Hatchweights, <laughs> Miss Linda Martin, meet Mr. Gary Fell. How do you do, Gary? Hello, Linda. Hey, Mickey, come here, will you, son? I want you to meet the rest of the family. Come on, son. This is my boy, Mickey. Hello, Mickey. I bet you feel mighty proud of your dad, don't you? I sure do. And I bet you he's mighty proud of you, too. Whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> come on, Linda. It's time for you to scram. In fact, you shouldn't be here at all. Hey, whoever made up the rule to keep women reporters out of fighters' dressing rooms? The Board of Censors. Gary's got to get dressed. But you're not going to send me away without a story, Pop. Now, why should I give you one when I didn't give one to the other reporters? We're hungry. Now, scram. Besides, we got a dinner date over at Moore's Tavern. Okay, Pop. See you later. No, Pop, I like her. I wonder if she'd go out to dinner with me sometime. How about tonight at the tavern? Okay. <laughs> well, that's my proposition, Gary, and I didn't think you had possibilities. I wouldn't want to hand you. What do you say? How about it, Pop? Well, sounds like a good proposition for both of us. Of course, it's going to mean an awful lot of hard work. And you're going to have to live according to the rules. No drinking and uh, no cigarettes. You're not going to be able to call your life your own. I don't say yes unless you intend to go through with it. You ought to be flattered, Gary. Kip Morgan is the best and squarest fight manager in the business. I wouldn't have thought it possible. One fight, he's practically a champ. Take it easy, Bill. I'll settle for a lot less. What are you talking about? You'll make so much money, the government won't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're interested, drop around my office tomorrow and we'll fix up the paper. Go on, Dad. Do it. OK. Pardon me, champ. Are they champagne is for you. Come for the little lady at the table over there. Well, uh, hey, will you uh, pour him a drink? Huh? Be right back. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Miss Rita Langdon, right? Glad to know you, Rita. Uh, would you like to uh, join our party? I'd love to. Right. Rita, this is a uh, Miss. I've already had the pleasure. I know, I met Miss Langdon. 
This is Pop Turner in the hand, Biff Benham. Coming heavyweight champion of the world, Gary Farrell. Thanks, Pop. Miss Linda, I wish you'd have Dad bring you out to visit me someday at school. You've got yourself a date, soldier. <laughs> What's the joke, son? I've just dated your girl, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Starting kind of young, ain't he? Wanna watch that? <laughs> I didn't know a little boy could keep a place so neat and clean. Me and my wife had inspections this morning. Oh, you and your... You and your what? Wife is a cadet slang for a roommate. <laughs> oh. Ricky, don't startle your daddy that way. He almost went down to the couch. <laughs> mm. I think she's super, don't you? We could do a lot worse. Hey, what are you two whispering about? You'll find out someday. Mickey hinted that a certain young lady met with his approval. Oh, Dad, you ain't supposed to tell everything you know. <laughs> I'm glad he did, because I know a certain young man who rates very high with me, too. Well, maybe you could binge hit for me, Linda, while I'm away at training camp. Keep Mickey from getting so lonesome. That's the easiest assignment I've ever had. How about dinner and a movie once in a while? Gee, that would be super. How long will you be away, Dad? Yeah, if I go to Big Pine's training camp, maybe a month. You could phone me once in a while, couldn't you? There's a phone out in the hall, and I wrote the number down for you. Okay, son, I'll phone you every chance I get. After every fight? That'll make it pretty late, won't it? Mm, not if I get permission. A lot of cadets get late calls. Okay, son, I'll phone you after every fight. Win, lose, or draw. You will always win, I bet you. <laughs> And Dad, huh? I'll pitch in for you while you're away. That'll be swell. Now listen, it's only temporary. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan's cooking up a mash for you with your hands, Gary. This Coco kid's a tough customer. They don't come too tough for me. Gary, I'm going to 
to a party for you. And I warn you to leave him alone? Jealous? Jealous. <laughs> Don't be silly. You know how we stand. You talk like I was poisoned. You ought to a guy like Gary. I don't have to stand for such insults. You don't have to, but you will. Listen, Mita, I like having you around for last, but don't think for one minute you've been kidding me. All I ask you to do is just leave him alone. Put down your little pick and shovel. There's gonna be no gold rush. I don't know why you have to talk to me like this. I'm sure I've never done anything to deserve it. I've always been on the square with you. Nuts, Rita. Good night, son. Gosh, he's a swell kid. Hey, get this, fellas. What well-known contender for a world's ring title persistently refuses to fight his challenger on the grounds that such a bout would be a financial failure? Can it be that this contender is trying to up a wide streak of yellow? <laughs> Am I laughing? That's a dirty lie. I ain't afraid of nobody. Who does that newspaper Jane think she is, anyway? You're a chump to blow your top, Bomber. You're telling the world that you're the guy she was talking about. Who doesn't know she was cracking about me? My Farrell's manager, Kip Morgan, throws a challenge at me every morning before breakfast. What are you grinning at, Linda? Nothing in particular. You women sure like to be mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> I could wring that dame's neck. But you'll never have a better chance. There's Linda Martin sitting over there. Take it easy, Bomber. Don't stick your neck out. Oh, uh, shut up. I'm going to tell her off right now. Why, you cheap little pencil pusher, you can't Just get away minute, with that. Just a minute, big boy. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm not talking to you, buddy. Sit down. Oh, yes, you are. OK, chump, you ask for it. Thanks, boys. I'll see you at the office. What's the big idea? Come on, let's get out of here before they turn in a riot corp. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's something phony about this. Come clean. That palookie you just laid low was Bomber Brown. The Bomber? Yeah. I'd like to see him duck a match with you now. Do you mean I've been framed? You've been framed right into the match with the contender. Oh, darling, I could kiss you. Hey, look, not here in front of all these people. Come on. <laughs> no wonder it takes Carlin phone this morning offering Gary a match with the Bomber. When do you a chance? Now, can I go up to Big Prime's camp and interview Gary? Uh, no, the camp's for men only. Oh, forget I'm a girl. I'm only a reporter going up for a sports story. You uh, wouldn't be falling for him, would you? Well, whatever gave you that idea? That's what I thought. You can see him when he isn't training. Oh, don't be so ungrateful. How am I going to interview him? Use the telephone. Thanks, Cupid. Hey, Kip. When you pass by a butcher shop, buy yourself a heart, will you? Hey, Pop, look what's coming. Sorry I'm late, Pop. We found this Langdon down the road with car trouble. She wants to use our phone. Okay. Get going. Sparky's waiting for you. Okay. Thanks a million, Gary. You've been a darling. I do hope you'll call and see me sometime when you're in town. I'll do that. You'll be able to find up any morning. <laughs> Am I intruding? You certainly are. You'll find the phone in the house. Thank you. That girl sure knows her way around. Yeah. What's the trouble with her car? A couple of spark plugs missing. Yeah? 
What are you talking about? That's impossible. I said she knew her way around, didn't I? Oh. Hey, Pop. Huh? Looks like Ladies' Day. Hi, Vic. Hello, Linda. Hi, Pop. Now, don't fool me. Kip said I could interview Gary. He didn't say you'd come out here to do it, did he? Well, not exactly. Yeah, I thought not. Well, get back in your little buggy and scram. After coming all the way out here, come on. Don't be an old meanie. Hello, Tits. Hello, you big hunk of man. Get the way we got work to do. Okay, okay, Pop. Goodbye, Linda. Say, that Pop's really on the warpath today, isn't he? Yeah, mostly about that Langdon gal. Rita Langdon? Yeah, she's up the house telephoning now. What's she doing up here? I don't think she come up here for the ride. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Come here. Keep that left up. If you don't protect your chin any better than that, that bummer will tear your head off. Don't you worry about me, Pop. I can take all he's got. Now, no back talk. I'm giving orders around here. Try it again. Okay, okay. Oh, Mr. Turner. <laughs> Yes, Miss Langdon? The line was busy, but the operator's going to call me. Well, that won't be necessary now. Miss Martin's driving back to town, and I'm quite sure she'd be very glad to give you a lift. I'd be delighted. Oh, hello. Come on, cutie. Goodbye, Gary. Come on. Goodbye. <coughs> Goodbye. Nice going. There you are, Major. This completes only half of your son's tuition, Mr. Farrell. When may we expect the balance? Well, uh, well it would be all right, Major, if I gave you a check after the fight. When is the fight? <laughs> Saturday night. That'll be all right. Thanks. Thanks very much, sir. Yeah. Mind if I run upstairs and see my boy? No, it's quite all right. Good day, sir. Good day. You're doing a great job here, Mick. I'm proud of you. And I'm proud of you, Dad. You know, every kid in school is jealous of me. Even the sergeants are nice to me. Oh, that really is something, isn't it? <laughs> you really like it here, Mick? See, Dad, it's super. That's swell. Only I wish. Well, I wish. Go on, go on, Mick. What do you wish? I wish that you could visit me more than you do. Linda's been swell, but I'm missing you. Well, uh, things uh, things are going to be different after my next fight, Mick. I'll <laughs> I'll have more time. Sure, you'll never let me down. You bet I won't. Oh, say, Dad, I've got a surprise for you. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. That can wait. There's uh, somebody downstairs waiting to see you. Linda? Uh, no, but somebody just as nice. She'd have to go with something to be as nice as Linda. Yeah, well, uh, come on down, see for yourself. Go on. You remember Miss Langdon, Mickey? Yes, how do you do, Miss Langdon? It's a pleasure to see you again, Mickey. Thank you. No wonder your father's so proud of you. I'd be proud of you, too, if you were my boy. Thank you, Miss Langdon. Come on, Dad, I'll show you that surprise. Okay. Not now, Mickey. We have to hurry off. Some friends of mine have invited us to dinner, and, well, they're important people. Yeah, yeah, Mick, we, uh, we've got to be going. But listen, I'll come back later, and then you can show me that surprise, huh? Okay, Dad. So long, son. Bye. Good luck. Goodbye, Miss Langdon. Goodbye, Cadet Farrell. So long, General.
Pete, if you know where Gary is, tell me. Why should I bother to lie to you? I told you I haven't seen him for days. Of course, Kip, darling. If I hear from him, I'll send him over to you. If he isn't in condition, a bomb will murder him. Do you know that he had that three days training in the past month? Did you find him? No. Ran into a guy who seen him last night. Where? At a cafe with Rita Langdon. I knew that dame was lying. Show up in five minutes, I'll forfeit the fight. You can't do that. Who said I can't? Well, it's that Langdon woman's fault. Give him just five minutes. Hi, laughing boy. Where have you been for the past three days and nights? Around? Sure, around every bar in town. Don't you realize this is the most important part of your career? Now, don't you care. Now, quit your squawking, will you? I'll whip the bomber for you. What are you going to use, an axe? Look, Kip, you take care of the business, and I'll do the fighting. Do as I say, there'll be no fighting. Okay, okay, don't bust a blood vessel. Tell you the fight's in the bag. Uh, Gary? Yeah? Here's a package just come for you for a message. Ah, swell, thanks, Bill. Probably from one of my fans. Hmm. Wait for the party tonight. What is this, Biff, a rib? It don't fit. It will in a couple of weeks. You know all the smart answers, don't you? Biff, don't let anybody in here. Don't worry, nobody will get by me. You can't come in, Linda. I don't want to come in, Biff. Good luck, Gary. Thanks, Linda. You look at him, kid. You let him get to you. Leave me alone.
Come on, telephone. Please ring. What's the idea of second hands? This ain't the last round. It is for you. Oh, yeah? on the champ. I'll take him, too. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Talk to Morgan. He's my manager. Gangway, fellas. I got a date with my girl. Come on, baby. We got places to go. Say, Morgan, come on. Well, looks like I lost that round, Vic. I'm afraid you lost the decision. I didn't have the heart to tell you. Thanks. Well, maybe I'll do better in my next fight. I hope so. Are you stepping out again tonight? That's right. I'm entitled to a little fun. I've earned it. Yeah, but can you afford it? Are you kidding? I'm in the big door now. That wasn't what I meant. instead of my feet, will you? I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean any harm. What's the matter with you tonight? You don't seem to be having much of a good time. Hi, Gary. How's the old dynamite? It's right there, boy. Right there. Come over and have a drink with it. Thanks. I'll do that. He's a nice fellow. Hey, Gary, when are you going to fight the champ? Pretty soon now, old man. Pretty soon. And you can bet on me. I'm going to lick him. Swell. <laughs> come on. I'm Oh, now, come on, baby. Don't bust up the evening now. Listen, let's try it again, huh? Now, you check. See me later, boys. See me later. I'm going to talk to that guy. What's the matter with you lately, Rita? You've changed. Oh, Champ, there's a few things I want to say. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Did you, did you hurt yourself? Hey, you uh, listen, sit down. Go on, get out of here, will you? <laughs> now, look, honey. The last couple of weeks, you changed. Don't blame him, lady. I apologize. Here, listen, babe. Hang on to this, will you? Come here, you. 
Lady friend went? Yes, sir. Right out the front door. Oh. Hello. Hello, this is Gary Farrell. Let me talk to Rita. Not in, eh? I'll tell her I call. Yeah. Brought you some breakfast, Gary. Oh. Don't mention food, please. But you gotta eat something. Look, you gotta feed a hangover. Oh, Biff, I'm I'm sicker than a dog. Sure. What else can you expect the way you've been hitting it up? And you certainly have been working overtime to make the headlines. <laughs> There's something in the paper about me? Yeah. The kind of publicity you can't pay for with money. Listen to this. Popular fighter in cafe brawl. It wasn't a brawl. All I did was pick the guy up and put him back in his place. Not according to the paper. Gary Farrell creates disturbance with cafe drunk. Well, the lug spilt wine all over Rita's dress. What do you expect me to do? So the contender for the heavyweight championship of the world had to show off for his lady love. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. So I lost my temper. So what? If liquor affects you like that, why don't you leave it alone before you start slapping kindergarten kids around? If all you can do is pick on me, go on. Get out of here. Scram. That's just what I'm going to do. Here, in case you want that for your scrapbook. Kip. Biff has already said it all. There may be a few things that Biff doesn't know. Well, if there are, you can save it for the next time. Boy, what a night. What a hangover. Uh, say, Kip, uh, I'm a little uh, shy of money. Let me have another thousand, will you? The thousand I gave you last Saturday is the balance you had coming from the bomber for all there is. I, I couldn't have spent that much. You could under Rita's management. She's an expert, I know. Why don't you get wise to yourself and quit being a chump? Don't you know that dame's taking you for a buggy ride? Ah, quit the sermon, quit the sermon. You're gonna let me have some money for my fight with the champ, can't you? Uh-huh. What makes you think you're gonna fight the champ? Why not? Because the boxing commission is fed up with the way you've been hitting the booze and they've suspended you in this state for a whole year. They can't do that to me. Oh, they can? Well, they've done it. And I feel the way they do. Listen, Gary. You and I are through as of now. That's okay with me, Kip. I can get myself another manager. And I'll fight the champ across the border. How do you like them apples? Well, for your own sake, I hope you don't. Hello, Mickey. How do you do, Miss Martin? Used to be Linda. Yes, I know. All the kids in school say 
You wrote that about my dad. Yes, Mickey, I did. How could you write something to make people laugh at him? I thought you were fond of him. Please try to understand, Mickey. I did it because I am very, very fond of him. You do something to hurt his feelings because you are fond of him? Tell me, did your daddy ever give you a spanking? Sure. He gave me some dandy. Well, didn't he like you? Of course he liked me. I was bad and had it coming to me. Do you suppose it made your daddy happy to give you a spanking? No, I don't suppose it did. But it was for my own good. Well, that's just the answer. You see, Mickey, your dad is being very foolish. He won't listen to his friends. He's hurting himself and everyone who loves him. He's a little bit big for me to put over my knee. So that story was the only way I could spank him. You mean it's true what you wrote? Yes, Mickey, it's true. And I hope that story brings him to his senses. It might help if I had a talk with Dad. Would you go with me to see him? Yes, darling, if you'd like me to. You try and get me a pass for Major Palmer. Tell him it's very important. Okay. You give me that every time I call. Well, when do you expect Miss Langdon back? Okay, okay, I'll call later. Are you feeling better? No. Well, maybe I better not show you this. Show me what? What Linda wrote about you in our column. Let me see that paper. What well-known K.O. artist is trying to play gent? From truck driver to stuff shirt via the glamour girl route. What a swell friend Linda turned out to be. What a two-timing she's giving him to laugh of the month. I'll sue that paper for damages. Well, why didn't you say something? Well, what is it you say? When everybody knows it, readers are making a chump out of it. Go on, beat it, Biff. You annoy me. Hey, here's a letter for you. Found over at the old house. Oh, Linda. Hello, Biff. Hi, Mickey. Mickey, what are you doing here? Why aren't you in school? To find out something, Dad. Find out about what? About you. Oh, I see. So you've been feeding him some of your lying keyhole gossip, eh? Look who's calling me a liar. Why, you conceited fathead. Dad, Linda wouldn't say anything about you that wasn't true. Go ahead. Tell Mickey. Tell him you're on the square with him and with Kip and all the rest of us who played you to win. Why don't you mind your own business for a change? Please, Dad. Shut up, Mickey. <laughs> Once you use your rights, you could have knocked him out. The winner and no champ. All right, champ. It was worth it. It's you. Hello, baby. Aren't you going to invite me in? I haven't time right now. I'm getting ready to go out. Well, listen, honey, I'd like to talk to you. It'll only be for a minute. Well, all right, but make it brief. Gee, gee, you look swell. Where have you been the last couple of weeks? I, I haven't heard from you. Forget that. What's on your mind? Uh, 
I need some money, Rita. I thought you might let me have it. Are you trying to make a touch? No, no, baby. It, it'll only be for a little while. Why don't you ask Kip Morgan? He's your manager. Uh, he was my manager. Don't tell me you split with him. That's right. Why? Well, I had a little trouble with the athletic commission. They suspended me for a year. Kip, we refused to handle me anymore. So? So, uh, I, I thought you might let me have a thousand. Until I get started again. You flatter me if you think I've got that kind of money. Well, listen, baby, I could get a thousand on a bracelet I gave you. It'll only be for a couple of weeks. Not on your life, big boy. I've heard that routine before. Why don't you run along and peddle your cauliflower? Oh, so that's it. They were right. You've been playing me for a sucker. Call it that if you want to, Gary, but I gave you a lot of my time. At first, I thought there was something to you besides muscle. But you're so crude, you embarrass me. Why don't you just forget little Rita? That's going to be easy. either since last Monday. And the Toledo clue led us nowhere, huh? Yeah, you know, the guy turned out to be a ham and egger from Chicago. Maybe we're following the wrong angle. Maybe he's not fighting. Huh? Sure he is. Guy as cocky as Gary wouldn't quit the ring even if it killed him. Biff! Hi. Did you find him? Sure. Did you talk to him? I didn't have the heart to after the beating I saw him take. Stubborn fool in no condition, I suppose. That's right. It was pitiful. In the preliminaries? Yeah, under the name of Knockout Bert. There must be something we can do to stop him. In spite of everything he's done to you, you still love him, eh? Sure. He was only playing hooky. Hey, he's fighting in Patterson tonight. If we fly, we could make it. Let's go, Kip. Get the airport, Biff. doing here? Came to see you fight. Well, now that you had your laugh, you can scram. Nobody's laughing, Gary. Why'd you come, then, if you didn't come to laugh? The fight of you washed up, Gary. I hate to see you go on. All washed up, eh? Well, don't you worry about me, Morgan. I know what I'm doing. You won't for very long if you keep this up. Why don't you swallow your pride and quit? Listen, if you came here to give me a lecture, you're a little early. School doesn't start till next week. Oh, you too. Well, I didn't think that you'd miss the fun. How much of a licking do you have to take before you come to your senses? You're wrong, Gary, and you know it. But you haven't got the courage to say so. Why, well, you're so worried about that silly pride of yours that you don't even give a thought to Mickey, the sweetest kid in the world. Mickey. Mickey, what happened to him? I'm all right, Dan. Hello, Mickey. Where's your uniform? 
haven't been much of a dad to you, but listen, don't you worry, son. I'll, I'll have you back in that military school again. Oh, who cares about? Who cares about? Who cares about playing soldier? That's kid stuff. I'm going to be a newspaper man. Linda says she can fix it for me if you and her can get married. Married? Sure. We've talked it over on the way. And that's it. You think she'll have me? Why don't you ask me, Gary? Sprite fans will be interested to hear that Gary Girl has given up the prize ring to put the little gold ring on the third finger of Linda Martin. It's a cinch that they will be blended before this edition hits the streets. <laughs>